Hey everybody, welcome back to Retro Modding News, my weekly show where I talk about what's new and upcoming in the world of retro console modding. First up, we have a new project from Zwenergy, who is the developer behind the GBA HD project, the open source Game Boy Advance consoleizer. This is an open source flash cart for the Watara Supervision. I have no idea what that is. It sounds like this is a pretty easy project to make and the bill of materials is only about $10 a piece. Looks like it's based off of a Raspberry Pi Pico and it looks like it doesn't need that many components soldered onto the PCB. So if you have any idea what the Wataro Supervision is, or maybe if you even have one of those, this sounds like it should be a pretty easy project for you to put together yourself and have a flash cart for the Wataro Supervision. Next up, the 3DO ODE that I've been talking about for a while now is open for pre-orders. So far there's just the FC1 ODE version as well as the external export ODE version. So if you're interested in either of those ODEs, you can come here and join the pre-order. It sounds like it's not gonna be shipping until September of this year. One thing I did notice on this page, it does say that this is an open source ODE, but I don't see any links to any sort of GitHub repository or any of the source code. Now I understand a lot of developers will try to make some of their money back, the development costs of actually making a project, so they'll kind of hide the source until they've made their money back by selling the product themselves, and then they'll release the source. So maybe that's the case here. I think it would be cool for any of these awesome projects that people create eventually become open source so that people could create them themselves if they want to. Next, we have a cool update from Mr. Add-ons. This is actually an addition to the Mr. Cade. The Mr. Cade is a JAMA adapter board for the Mr. Basically allows you to use a Mr. inside of an arcade cabinet. Mr. Add-ons here is sharing the Mr. Cade versus prototype. To me, this Mr. Cade versus board sounds really awesome. It sounds like you can use a single Mr. and Mr. Cade to power two different arcade cabinets. I actually found this picture that Lionplex took from Brooklyn Arcade. It's basically these two Astro City arcade cabinets sort of facing each other. They're basically playing against each other. So this seems like a perfect setup for a Mr. Cade. You have a Mr. Cade in one of these cabinets and then you use this Mr. Cade versus in the other cabinet. You can feed audio and video from the Mr. to the second cabinet as well as the controller for the second person. So this is still just a prototype. I'm not sure how much it's gonna cost in the end. And I know even that the Mr. Cade units themselves, which is that actual JAMA adapter for our Mr., those are not in stock right now. So an entire Mr. Cade setup with the Mr. Versus is probably gonna be relatively expensive, but we're talking about arcade hardware here. So just having a working arcade setup like that in the first place is kind of expensive. Next, we have an update on these Wii HDMI kits. Now, this Wii HDMI kit is based off of Arthurmus's Wii HDMI mod. This is not the Black Dog Tech Wii Dual that has both the analog and HDMI output. So you're only getting HDMI output with this kit. It looks like it's primarily designed for these RVL 40, 50, 60, and RVK 1 and 2 motherboards, but it sounds like there's some kind of an accommodation for older Wii revisions. I've ordered one of these kits and I've added it to the massive backlog that I have of mods. Me personally, I think that an HDMI mod is really worth it on a Wii. It's one of those consoles that I have a lot of nostalgia for. I really love my Wii and I think it would be cool to easily connect it to my TV to be able to play with my son or something. Now I do want to note that this doesn't have any upscaling, so I think it's only 480p output. So if you're interested in picking up an Arthurmus Wii HDMI mod, you could pick one up from Phantom Mod right now. Next we have a kind of sus new stand from Todd Gill. I mean, I'll be honest, I don't necessarily like the idea of a PS1 being stood up vertically like that. However, this is a vertical stand for the PlayStation 1. And Todd has even designed it so that the parallel port in the back here is exposed. So if you have something like a PSIO, it will still be able to fit in the back of the PlayStation. And even better, if you subscribe to Todd Gill's Patreon, you can have access to the files right now. So if you wanna support Todd, Besides buying his products, you can go over and support him on Patreon. I'm curious of your thoughts on this PlayStation 1 stand. I mean, I sort of appreciate that Todd Gill is thinking outside the box here with this, but I don't know how confident I would be with having a fully modded PS1 with the X station as well as a PS1 digital in this thing. If that thing fell over, that's an awful lot of money to have come crashing down. Next, we have a pretty cool NES mod that I noticed from this 1UP Restorations post. They have a video here about this console and how they fixed it. I haven't watched the video yet, but I noticed that there was a very rusty NES. This is sort of like the power unit in the corner here. This is sort of like a separate board on the NES where the power regulator sits. And so 1UP Restorations did both a 
OpenTendo, which is basically a replacement for the main NES board here. But they also put together this power board from Merlin Shaw. The Gerbers and Bill of Materials are available here on GitHub. So if you want to create one yourself, you can. But it's basically another recreation NES power board like we've seen before. This project is actually sort of similar to Bordy's NES IO mod. I know this is the real Phoenix's site, but this is a version of Bordy's NES IO board. But it also has connections for connecting an NES RGB to this board as well and having a Sega Genesis style DIN output embedded into this NES power board. And actually this Merlin Shaw board has this similar scenario where you have the pins here that connect to the NES RGB and a Sega Genesis style output up here. However, I noticed that there was a NES power module redesign here from Merlin that seems a little bit more like the original NES power board, but it kind of extends it actually. So it actually has stereo output from the NES. So where the original, it was just composite video and a single channel audio output. Now you get composite video output and the left and right audio channels from the NES. So I think this is actually pretty interesting. If you have some catastrophic NES issue where the whole thing's rusted out like that one up re restorations mod, you can kind of quickly whip up one of these boards here and get the composite video working again in an original NES. Last but not least, and speaking of the NES, we have some more pictures here from Crix for this RGB blaster. This RGB blaster is an RGB output that sits below an NES cart, but there's a provision here for some kind of an RGB DIN, probably the NES RGB DIN output. Just kidding, it's gonna be the same compatible with the Genesis 2 style RGB DIN. So while this is still a prototype, this is a very good news for people who are looking for a no mod solution for getting RGB out of a top loading NES. I know that the NES RGB is not a simple mod. I mean, it's not the most difficult mod I've ever done, but it's definitely not something I would recommend for beginners. So if this RGB blaster provides high quality RGB output without needing to be a mod, I think that's a real home run for a lot of people. And it's also great to hear from new projects from Crix. He's the creator of all the EverDrive flashcards. So you pretty much know that he's going into this project trying to make a high quality device. No news on availability or pricing and all, so we're just gonna have to wait and see what Crix does with this project. That's it for this week. If you wanna suggest a new story to me, follow me on Twitter or join the Discord. Thanks for watching, and I'll see you in the next video.